This phone is incredible. It's the brand new Oppo Find X. And no, I hadn't heard of it either. Oppo is actually a huge brand in China and Asia, but it's not really well known here in the UK or the US. But this is their new 2018 flagship, the Find X, which is a bit of an odd name. But then again, there's nothing really that ordinary about the phone. I mean, just look at this. It pops up. Oppo's hidden all the camera gubbins inside the phone with a motorized slider rising out of it every time you unlock the phone with your face or you open the camera app. Part of me feels like it is a bit of a gimmick and also I worry about just how durable this is in the long term. Although Oppo do say they've stress tested it for 300,000 uses, but we'll see. But then the other part of me just thinks it's incredible and brings a stupid childish grin to my face. It is pretty cool. And what it does mean is that the Find X doesn't have a notch. In fact, it has barely any bezel at all. We're looking at a 93.8% screen to body ratio, which is insane. And I believe right now the highest on any phone. It's also one of the best looking and the most futuristic looking phones I've ever used. The glass back is properly stunning too, with a subtle purple or blue gradient around the edge. I didn't find it as much of a fingerprint magnet as I thought it would, but it is quite slippery to hold. Actually, the first time I picked this up when the screen was off, I genuinely thought this was the Galaxy S9 Plus. It feels almost identical in the hand with the same rounded corners and curved edge screen. But if anything, that's a compliment. It's really comfortable to use despite having a massive 6.42 inch screen. Now I do love the design, but there's a couple of issues. Firstly, the pop-out mechanism means the Find X isn't water resistant. There's no IP rating, which is a shame. There's also only one speaker grill on the bottom of the phone, which is decent, but it doesn't sound great and you can easily cover it with your hand. And also, there's no headphone jack. None of those are really deal breakers, but they would be nice to have. You'll also notice there's no fingerprint reader, which is also slightly annoying. I feel like they could have put one on the back for more secure unlocking. So instead, either you use your pin or your password, or you use your face. Now obviously, in order to use the face unlock, the camera has to pop out. So it does add a split second longer to the process. The whole thing takes about one second, which is longer than most, but I didn't really have an issue with it. But the good news is it also packs in an IR sensor, so you can use it even if you're in a pitch black room. So having barely any bezel means Oppo have managed to cram in a massive 6.4 inch screen. That's the same size as the Note 9 in a phone that is a good deal shorter and a lot easier to hold. And it's a stunning screen as well with a taller 19.5 by 9 AMOLED panel. It is Full HD Plus rather than Quad HD Plus though, which is a bit of a shame considering the size, but at 401 pixels per inch, it's still very, very sharp. And actually that does help towards giving it better battery life. But the Find X is a lot more than just a pretty face. Inside we get a Snapdragon 845 processor, a whopping 8 gigs of RAM and 256 gigs of storage. Although there's no room for microSD, but it does support dual SIM cards. Those are some pretty impressive specs, and as you'd expect, it handled every app and game I threw at it flawlessly. However, coming from the OnePlus 6, which is my daily driver right now, Oppo's Color OS software on top of Android 8.1 does just feel a little bit slow. Not laggy or unresponsive or anything, just long animations make it feel less snappy than I'd like. I did try the trick of reducing animation times in the dev options, but then you're stuck with an orangey yellow notification bar saying you're in the dev mode, so that doesn't really help. It's also slightly frustrating just how many apps and bloatware comes pre-installed on the phone. Now I do know that this is the case with most Chinese phones as they don't have access to Google services normally. So basically they need their own version of everything. And of course you can just hide them all in a folder. But other than that, this is a really nice phone to use. I like the recently used apps tray, which looks a lot like the new version in Android Pie. And I'm really happy, really, really happy this comes with the same gesture support as the OnePlus 6, which means you can get rid of the software keys at the bottom and do everything through gestures. Swipe up from the bottom to go home, hold it for recent apps, and you swipe up from the left or the right to go back. Again, the animation speeds make it feel a little bit less snappy and responsive as the OnePlus 6, but I do much prefer using gestures, and you do get that extra bit of space back at the bottom of the screen, making it feel even more like an edge-to-edge -edge screen. But having such a big screen and powerful specs, you might expect the Find X's battery life would suffer. But actually, thanks to the 3730 mAh cell, it's one of the best. 
By the end of a normal day, I had around 35% of my battery remaining, which is really impressive and about on par with the Galaxy Note 9, and it means you can easily get a day and a half out of it. Plus it uses the same dash charge technology as the OnePlus, although Oppo call it VOOC or VOOC charging, but either way a 30 minute charge will get you from zero to about 65%. Now as for the camera, there's a 16 megapixel f2 main lens with OIS and a second 20 megapixel 2x telephoto lens, as well as a frankly ridiculous 25 megapixel f2 front selfie camera. So I took the Find X and the new Note 9 into my local town with me to see how they compared side by side. They both take really nice photos in good light. In this photo of a path leading to a field, the grass on the Note 9 looks far too over sharpened, but it does handle the brighter highlights of the clouds better than the Oppo. In the cafe bar they look similar, but the Note 9 is definitely sharper and has more detail, particularly close up if you look at the back of the women's shirts and their hair. Now cropping in by 300%, the server's face and the barista writing on the black shirt are much clearer on the Note. In lower lighting conditions, the Oppo falls behind again. The Note 9 can use its much wider f1.5 aperture to brighten the dark scenes. In the kitchen, the Note 9 once again comes out on top. Just look how blown out that orange light is on the Oppo. Clearly it can't handle dynamic range that well. But the Oppo does regain some ground with the front selfie camera. Its automatic 3 HDR mode handles dynamic range far better. Just look at the difference in the clouds between the photos. As for video, the Oppo maxes out at 4K30 versus 4K60 on the Note, and while quality is similar, the lack of any sort of video stabilization at 4K is a big drawback on the Oppo. It's the same case on the Huawei P20 Pro. But if you drop it back to 1080p, which to be fair is what most people will probably shoot at since it's the default resolution, it's much smoother. So the Find X has a solid camera, it takes great photos if you've got good light, and the HDR selfies are very impressive, but the f2 aperture just can't compete in lower light, and the lack of 4K video stabilization is a bit disappointing. Now before I get to the end and I tell you how much this thing costs, let me just quickly run through 5 more things I like, and 5 things I don't like about the Find X. Something I really like is when you get a notification, to let you know because it doesn't have an always on display, there's a cool edge lighting effect around the screen. You can customize it as well or turn it off if you prefer. The big screen is great for multitasking and if you swipe up with three fingers, it puts you in split screen mode. Now whether you're playing a game or watching a full screen video, a little multitask tray pops up for a second or two. You can tap on any of the apps and then you get it in a new window on top, which makes it feel a bit more like a desktop computer. The pop-up camera for face unlock could get a bit annoying if you have to do it every time you unlock your phone at home or at the office, but if you add these places as a trusted space, then your phone will always be unlocked there, which makes it a bit quicker to use. Night Shield is a really handy feature that warms the display to reduce eye strain at night, but you can also turn it to black and white, or even put it in negative colour, which is nice for reading. Now for a few things I'm not so keen on, and I wish I could just get rid of notifications with one swipe, not have to swipe them and then tap delete or go to the notification settings. It is a small thing, but it would also be nice if there was a dark mode or theme for the phone, as the bright white notification tray and settings menu can be a bit bright if you're using it at night. The telephoto lens doesn't have any stabilization unfortunately, so video is a shaky mess and some photos can come out blurry. If you swipe right from the home screen you get the Smart Assistant page, which to be honest just isn't that useful, and there's only a few select Oppo apps that it can display. A news feed would be much more useful. And finally, while it does feel pretty fast at launch, it'll be interesting to see the long term performance of the Find X in terms of speed and battery, so I'm going to revisit this in a few months. And so that is the Oppo Find X, and while it's not perfect, it is a seriously impressive phone, and one I would highly recommend, if it wasn't for the price. It's a thousand pounds, well, 999 pounds. It's the same price as the iPhone 10. Now, considering the specs, the beautiful design, the innovative pop-out camera, that doesn't seem too unreasonable. But honestly, I just don't think Oppo, here in the West at least, is a brand that can command premium prices like that. But really, the bigger issue is for half the price, you could get the OnePlus 6, which is just as good, really. Yes, it has a notch, it's got less built-in storage, and the battery isn't quite as good, but you do get a headphone jack, it has much faster software, and it's half the price. But if money isn't a factor, I would still definitely recommend checking out the Find X, and I've put links to this in the description below if you want to find out more. 
But what do you think? Do you like the look of this thing? And is the, wait for it, <laughs> motorized slider awesome or just a bit of a gimmick? Let me know what you think in the comments below. I hope you liked this video. If you did, do click that like and subscribe button so you don't miss out on my next one. And I'll see you guys next time right here on The Tech Chat. Thank you.